Hello! We are going to plan a blanket today together. I have these windings. I'm going to sift through them a little bit. These windings are actually made out of coddling. But that doesn't matter because I can choose one. Oh, this one's speaking to me right now. It's a nice bright one. I can plan a blanket even if the winding isn't in the right yarn. In fact, here is our jar of tuna yarn. Yarn in a jar. Our helpful tool for looking for colors. And let's see what we've got. A dark purple. Ooh. This looks like a good dark purple. This is dark royal. Let's use that. And then we need a nice bright orangey yellow. Here's a good one. Dandelion. This little stripe on the edge, that's a brighter yellow. I'm going to use this really bright yellow here. This is canary. And then we need this orange. Here's a good orange. Carrot. And then this, I think, is the same orange in the winding, but in looking at it, I think I want that to be yet another color, some kind of a red. Let's get some reds out here. Actually, this one, I think, is it's a little closer to the carrot than the others. Let's use this. This is the tomato. Okay, well, let's push those aside. And these are our colors. We can be inspired by those up there. And here's our winding. Now, how do we turn this into a blanket? And look, I have made a large one of these just because it's going to be easier for us to see. And we're going to write our project over here. This is going to be a blanket in tuna. That's the name of the wool is tuna. And I'm going to make this blanket 120 centimeters wide. That's in the reed. And it's going to be a balanced twill, which means we're going to use a 25 dent reed. And if I say 1-2, you see that in some of the Swedish books. That means one end per heddel and two ends per dent. That looks like a Z there. I'll make it into a two. And so if we have two ends in a dent in this 25 dent reed, there's 25 dents in 10 centimeters. So there's two and a half dents in one centimeter times two ends per dent equals five ends per centimeter. So that's our set. And then if we're taking a look at our width, 120 centimeters wide times five ends per centimeter or EPC, that equals 600 ends. So now we know how many warp ends we need. And here is our winding. How do we turn this winding into 600 ends? I'll show you how I do this. There are my edges. There's my center stripe. And conveniently, this one looks like I can make divisions there. I have five divisions. Depending on your winding, you might want to make four divisions or six or seven. You can do something that corresponds to your winding. It makes it easier. And so if I have five sections here and 600 ends, I'm going to take those 600 ends and divide by my five sections and I get 120 ends in each section. And if I were to divide each section in half, sometimes that's a useful tool just to have as well. That would be 60 ends in each of these smaller sections, etc. 
and now what I can do is you see how these brown threads, the width of this brown stripe or the orange stripe, it lines right up with that 60. And let's see how many strands of yarn I have in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I know that eight strands equals, in this case, 60 warp ends. That will be a useful tool. And now I can figure out what one strand is worth. If 60 warp ends are eight strands, I can take the 60 and divide by the eight. And so I get one strand is worth 7.5 warp ends. And so now what I'm going to do is I make divisions down at the bottom, and these are going to correspond to my actual stripes. And I like to deal with the little stripes first, the skinny ones. And I'm making room down here to write in. And here are some more skinny stripes, skinny blue, my skinny orange. And this is one strand of yellow. So up here, one strand of yellow with seven and a half warp ends. I'm going to round that up to eight. Same thing with this purple strand. That's going to be eight warp ends. And these as well. Those are single strands. That purple one and the orange one. Okay. This purple stripe is a little bit wider. It's two strands of wool. And so I am going to call that 16 ends. And now we can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 strands in this orange stripe. We know that 8 strands is 60 warp ends. So that'll be 60. Then we can count these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we're going to take 12 and multiply by 7.5. And we get 90. So 12 strands of yarn is going to be 90 threads. And then this section here, from this purple over to that purple, I'm seeing this line up with another 60 right over here. So 60 from this purple to that purple. We've already taken out 8 for the gold, 8 for the purple. So if I take 60 and I subtract these 16, I get 44. For that purple stripe. And so now what I can do is add all of this together and see how many I have. So 44 plus 8 plus 8 plus 90 plus 16 plus 60 plus 8 plus 8 is 242. And that means this over here is also 242. So if I add 242 plus 242, I get 484. How many ends do I have total? 600. So 600 minus 484 equals 116. So now I have my total number of warp ends of each color all mapped out. I'm going to show you one small variation. And then we'll, we'll write it up in a way so you can see what happens after this. Here's another piece of scrap paper. And what if instead of just turning this winding into one big blanket warp, we want to have repeats. That can actually look nice as well. And so we can line these up. I could have three across. 
Well, let's take a look at what five looks like across. These would be little skinny stripes, but that'd be a beautiful blanket as well. Imagine it as a plaid or something. So now, what we're going to think about is we still have 600 threads in, now in this full width. And we have five repeats of the winding. And it's the same math we did before. We take the 600, divide by 5, and we get 120. So this time, instead of this stripe being done as 600 threads, we're going to do it as 120 threads. And we can do the same divisions that we did before. And this time, we're going to take our 120 threads, because this whole thing is 120. And we divide by our five sections, and we get 24. So now we have 24 ends in each section. And our little half section, the brown, it looks brown in my copy. It's actually going to be orange, so I should be calling it orange. But that means that these little half sections are 12s. So now we have 8 strands equals 12 ends. And so one strand equals... We have to take the 12 and divide by 8. So one strand equals 1.5 ends. Well, we're not going to use an end and a half. So these little stripes now, I'm going to call those two ends. And I do want to stick with even numbers. It just makes it easier to wind the warp. But now this half section is 12. So... This, from the purple to the yellow and the purple, that's 12. We've used up four of them. And so that means we have eight left. And here I'm going to do a similar thing. These are now going to become twos. They were eights in our first rendition. And then this fatter purple stripe is going to, it's two strands. So actually, let's take a look. Two strands times 1.5 is 3. We're going to call this 4 ends. But then here, our 8 strands can now be 12 ends. That's what it says up here. 8 strands is 12 ends. This is still 12 strands. Let's see what that turns out to be. 12 times 1.5. It says 18 strands. And... Then we can do the same thing we did before. We add all of those up. And so we get 8 plus 2 plus 2 plus 18 plus 4 plus 12 plus 2 plus 2 is 50. And then over here, that means that is also 50. So those two edges together are 100, and we wanted a total of, this total was now 120, and so that leaves 120 minus 100 equals 20, so we have 20 left over for our middle stripe. And we could leave it at that, or we could say, well, this stripe really looks bigger than that yellow one. So maybe we could call this 24, and we could call this 16, and we can do whatever we want, but I'm doing that. And now, to write this up, we're going to move this over here, and then I can go there. We're going to take this, it's the beginning here with the dark royal, is going to start with 8 threads. And then the canary 
I have these colors written in the order of appearance. It's how I usually do it. So two canary, and then I go back up to two dark royal, and then 16 dandelion, and back up to the dark royal. That's four threads, and then 12 of the carrot, and then two dark royal, and two. And these are going to be the tomato. That's where I'm putting that darker red. And then we have 24 of the dark royal. And then we mirror it out the same way on the other side. For 16, 2, 2, 8. And then we can add these across. 8 plus 2 plus 4 plus 2 plus 24 plus 2 plus 4 plus 2 plus 8 is 56 of the dark royal and 2 plus 2 equals 4 of the canary 16 and 16 is 32 of the dandelion 12 and 12 of the carrot would be 24 and 2 and 2 tomato is 4 so we can add that together, 56 plus 4 plus 32 plus 24 plus 4 equals 120. But then this whole thing, remember we had five repeats. So this whole thing will be times five repeats. So times 5, 120 times 5 equals 600. And so we have two versions of this blanket.